Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This week, we'll continue talking about the best arguments I've heard for atheism. Next up is number two, the argument from virtue. Premise one, God is, by definition, the greatest conceivable being. So he has to be infinitely great in virtue, just because being the greatest conceivable being involves being infinitely good. Premise two, however, virtue involves overcoming pains and dangers. In fact, no being can really be virtuous unless it can suffer pain or destruction, or at least the danger of those things. Premise 3. However, in order to suffer pain and destruction, God would need to forfeit his position as the greatest conceivable being. Conclusion. Therefore, God doesn't exist. Now, the reason why I say this argument is strong is that not only does it use the deductive format that we've been using, but the conclusion follows from the first three claims. In other words, if the first three statements are correct, then God is logically impossible. However, upon closer inspection, we can see that, in fact, only one of those first three claims is provably true. The first, that God is infinitely good by definition. There are problems with the other two. First, premise two assumes that God's nature is basically the same as our own, that in order for God to be virtuous, a process is needed through which God acquires or earns virtue from his surroundings. God isn't similar to us in that way, though, because God is timeless. We might need to face huge challenges to develop courage through a series of events taking place over time, but we can't assume that the same restriction exists for God, because to him all times are one. Second, even if God's nature were similar to a human nature, it would still be possible for him to possess virtues, such as courage, without needing to face challenges to them. Even an ordinary man can be extremely courageous and use that courage to just live a normal life, to make the choices he needs to make to go to work, put food on the table, and raise a family. Virtue doesn't need a challenge to give birth to it, it's just that as human beings, our virtues are often strengthened or outlined by challenges and threats. Third, Premise 2 also assumes that God's virtues are similar to ours in nature. I think that's a pretty big stretch. God is virtuous by being the source of virtues, not just because he exemplifies them. However, I think a whole book of debating points could be written on premise 3, because the whole idea that it's somehow impossible for God to experience pain and remain God is a claim that by itself would invalidate Christianity if it were true. The first problem with premise 3 is that it assumes the ability to experience pain is necessarily a weakness or an imperfection. Just a cursory glance at almost any animal life in the world proves that's not the case. Animals require pain. They depend on it because it warns them which parts of their bodies are weak or wounded. Pain reminds animals of their vulnerabilities, so it's not an imperfection in an animal life form. The other thing that's wrong with premise 3 is that it treats God as if he were only one thing in the universe which can have certain good traits but not others when they contradict. However, Christianity is quite clear that while God is unified in nature, he's also multiple. He also has three distinct persons participating in his divine nature. One of those persons has a fully human nature in addition to his fully divine one. Now, God's divine nature isn't capable of loss, destruction, or unhappiness because those are imperfections to the divine nature, but to the human nature, they're par for the course. So even supposing that pain was necessary in order for virtue to exist, the human nature of Jesus makes it impossible to claim that God can't experience pain. After all, if more than one person of God can share the same nature, and one person of God can have multiple natures, that proves that God can experience pain, loss, and so forth, without in any way tarnishing his divine essence. He could just experience the pain and loss in a more limited nature whenever he wishes. Lastly, the whole idea of using virtue as an argument to disprove God's existence is logically invalid. You see, the only reason we can even use virtues in a deductive argument is because we know that virtues really exist. They're objective facts. However, if there was no source and greatest example of those virtues, the virtues wouldn't have any real existence, in the same way that warmth on Earth wouldn't be real if the sun ceased to exist, or gravity on Earth wouldn't be real if the Earth lost all of its mass. The very act of claiming that objective virtues exist depends upon the assumption that God exists. Obviously, there are still lots of holes in this argument, so it can't completely prove what it claims to. And because of that, it doesn't seriously challenge the proof for the existence of God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.